Let's rock and roll, boys. Reach for my hand, I'll soar away. Welcome, ANP fans, to another episode of ANP, episode 33. I am your host today, Daniel Tortelli, and I am joined by Matthew Schultz. Hi, it's me, it's Matt. And Austin Cummings. Hey, Danny. Yeah, so we are back. We are back for another uh, brief, brief end mm. in the news. Um, mm. This is something that's just recently popped up in the past few days, as I'm sure many of you have already heard about this. Um, the Wall Street Journal originally reported um, you that heard Nintendo it, nerds? is considering making two, two new iterations, that's right, of our very own Nintendo Switch. Um, yes, they're thinking of a pro version. Now you're playing with power. Uh, geared towards more avid gamers and a uh, cheaper, uh, inexpensive option, maybe like a Switch Mini um, to get a little bit more affordable. So, yeah, we got some things to talk about here. Um, initial reactions on some new Switch, new Switch XL, new Switch Mini thoughts from the panel. Let's start with you, Matthew. <sighs> Me? Oh, boy. Uh, so wasn't surprised, but also still excited. I think that, um, you know, the switch itself is, is, it's been nice, but it's, it's been a while, you know, we've, we've had this device. I mean, at least all of us, yeah, it's I, old, I, it's trash. It, it is it, trash. It's no, I mean, we've, old. we've talked a lot about what we want to see, you know, um, and this rumor initially was debunked like a while ago, um, or at least dismissed by Nintendo and to kind of hear all these major outlets reporting on it, um, and picking it up and reporting on it again, like it's nice to, it's nice to see that Nintendo is doing this because they're, it's, it's true. They need to kind of capture that momentum again. Um, and I think that new versions of the Switch are exactly what, uh, exactly what they need. And I, I also think that the Nintendo is kind of lost without their two, their two tier platforms, right? They're like, oh, we need the pillars. We right. need yeah, the we pillars. long had we talked about it on the show, but when the DS came out, Nintendo was all about that was their third pillar. Game Boy Advance is going to mm-hmm. be fine. GameCube are going to be fine. Psych. Neither of those were fine anymore. And it was just <laughs> the DS until the Wii came out. And so, for the sake of uh, Nintendo, I agree that it's you know I there are few things in this in this world that I cherish truly more than a good Nintendo hardware redesign. It's so fun and as we talked about many times but i enjoy getting the other iterations i love when they do the limited edition consoles and it's just nintendo's the ultimate toy maker and these things always feel great and they often i uh i think iterate in a way that is surprising but feels overdue so like for example Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know the ds was the DS Fat, a highly unattractive console, even when it came out. But the DS Lite was, you know, had the brighter screen, the better form factor. It looked like an Apple device. And then the DSi had the matte finish and the downloadable uh, content. And so they're always they're always managing to do that. Same thing with 3DS. The first one didn't look great, but then we had an XL all of a sudden. And then there was the 2DS out of nowhere. And we have the new version, the more powerful. So I'd like to see what they do with this. And it would be... Uh, a new avenue for Nintendo to release two at about the same time, so to have both a premium model and a base one. You see both Xbox and uh, and PlayStation adopting this. You have PS4 Pro. Yeah, the mid generation. Slim. Yeah. Yeah, we have Xbox One S as the base console and the X mm-hmm. as the premium. And you know, when I think about it, when I saw this news, it's like my my sister will be back from the Peace Corps soon. Looking forward to that. And mm-hmm. she's a big Animal Crossing fan. Mm-hmm. And I bought her a 3DS XL back in the day. Oh, oh, oh what a and, great um, brother you are. Uh, yeah. And, well, and so the... <laughs> well. But she really just wanted to play, you know, a few games. And it's it's a little bit of a harder ask as far as the price point, you know, for the Switch. There was a really great Animal yeah. Crossing bundle with the cool logos back in the day. You got the game and the console. So something that was more fitting to that price point is really, mm-hmm. you know, exciting uh, mm-hmm. To me, when I think about uh, that type of option, and that Nintendo has to be thinking about that as the 3DS really doesn't have any big games at all coming out. We just got Kirby's yeah. Extra Epic Yarn, and that's, that was kind of the last. Yeah, I think that's going to be the last uh, yeah. first-party uh, game from Nintendo. Um, yeah, that's a good point. 
Yeah, and I mean, this is uh, also, it, it makes sense just with their history in general. I think, as we've talked about many times here, it was usually about two or three years between their DS, various DS models. Um, the 3DS came out, and then two or three years later, the new 3DS, new 3DS, you know, that whole thing. Um, yeah. So it's in line with Nintendo's own history, as well as, you know, like we, like Austin just said, between PlayStation and Xbox, their mid-generation stuff. Um, so yeah, it makes, it makes sense. Um, yeah, if it, can be a reasonable price and still get a good package of everything else included. Yeah, it'd be perfect. So what do we think, you know, between these two, um, because again, they're reporting from Wall Street Journal. They claim to have sources to the um, to the suppliers, to the manufacturing teams uh, that make the devices themselves. Um, That's that's who they're getting a lot of this from. Um, Yeah, I I don't suspect the Wall Street Journal is going to be wrong. Uh, and also something like right. this is just a you know big business decision. We see this every year. This uh, cycle of rumors go through for Apple. They're almost always all correct. Where because consoles such as Nintendo, Nintendo's working with an Nvidia chipset. You know they have to place large scale mm-hmm. orders for those right. chips. The chips get specially redesigned. Uh, I think it's one of the Tegra uh, chips that is being u- utilized to power the Switch. It's like that Tegra One special, currently, yeah. Yes, yeah, and it's special made for the, uh, for the mm-hmm. platform for Nintendo. They order it, so these things can't really be that hush hush. And mm-hmm. um, so I fully expect this is real. And part of the rumor is they're coming out this year. And you got to think this will be an E3 announcement. And also, you know, PlayStation is not going to be. Sony will not have a presence at E3 this year. Now we think Xbox might be there with the next iteration of their console. Um, but it would be, you know, it's an opportunity for Nintendo to make a big. Or talking show. about their streaming, streaming, you know, yeah, streaming yeah gaming service. I think, episode, I think yeah. they definitely will. But I, I think you know, Microsoft would like to get out ahead of Sony and try to take their thunder a little bit mm-hmm. uh, in the same in the same way that they were really stomped on uh, last last generation uh, go. And so, but Nintendo has an opportunity here to really be one of the more exciting pieces of hardware out of e3 uh so i truly think it's going to be real but yeah danny why don't you uh kind of kick us off into the real discussion here as we kind of make some little predictions as to what we would like to see yes the exciting part all right so we have in this corner we have switch pro switch 1.5 you know max whatever and in this corner to me we (laughs) we have uh the switch Switch mini Mini. or the Mm -hmm. switch uh se you know we're thinking like interchangeable faceplates iphone mines Uh, right right um a toggle for wi-fi you can turn me on let's let's start with the switch let's start with the switch mini or or the the more inexpensive option they come out with what do we think about it is going to make it more inexpensive as far as specs go what do we think that price is going to be um what what do you think the big selling point is going to be of this think, switch mini what do we think uh just first off the name is going to be do we want to go around and just do a quick name prediction um because now we have precedent yeah. the game boy advance had the micro so there is a chance we get that and part of the kind of speculation right now is that this switch might be more the form factor of that of the playstation vita which should be quite a bit mm-hmm, smaller mm-hmm. screen wise mm-hmm. um and quite a bit lighter especially without the bulk perhaps of removable joy con but we'll talk yeah. about that um name predictions from both of you i'm gonna say uh, i want it to be the the switch pro but i can see them going with the xl xs monikers mm-hmm. like I, I think that based They're on so what they've bad. done before yeah right yeah but what's this going to be then you think xs versus xl yeah, yeah, that's my that's my prediction. Not what I want. That's my prediction, though. <laughs> Man, interesting. I was gonna uh, say the Switch Mini, but now I'm thinking if we're thinking of like Game Boy history, I'm thinking like Switch Pocket or yeah, like Switch Pocket Pocket's Switch good. kind of I thing. I get into that. Um, Switch I, S, I, you know, is always good. Yeah. What were you saying? I think that? I, I think like Switch Micro is a is a possibility, or um, I think Switch Lite might be yeah, something they go with that's very um, very possible I think. but then again they also you know are they're fond of apple and the way apple's done things so i can see them going with even like a just a some obscure letter <laughs> that's like S- S- switch r, r. Oh, yeah well, the race car of s you know is fast and switch, yeah. switch, switch r, c we have the yeah. 10 r um oh God, yeah. yeah yeah whereas with the with the pro or the, you know the, the i i can see that being something similar you know that you're like oh that's Nintendo's way of saying that this is better. What about no like the Super Switch? Would that so, ooh, be? Right. Super yeah, Switch. Could that be the successor? That, that was in the uh, past. 
That's but, a good um, point because because these models, you know, just in general are probably like Switch 1.5, right? Well, Both of them. I, They're not I, I Switch 2.0. 1.2, you know. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I think this yeah. discussion needs like some, you know, some some boundaries, right? Because we we're in a we're not in a traditional life cycle of of console that we've been in in the past, like the, especially in you know this last generation, the iterations have become more of a thing. Though Nintendo's been doing that with their their handhelds a lot. Like I think this mm-hmm. is you know this is more of an industry standard now. So the Switch, hopefully, is something that's m- around for much longer than a traditional uh, console yeah. cycle. But um, you know, because knowing Nintendo, their next console probably will will be something very different. Even though they're and, uh, sitting on a constant gold mine with this thing. But... We will so... get the Wii U two next. <laughs> Good. We should. Switch U. Um, That's what it's gonna be called. It's gonna be called Switch U. Oh no. <laughs> so so I did want to say though that like um specifically talking about this the the mini, the micro, the light, whatever it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um what do I think they're gonna do to to potentially change this up? Well we the article has talked about a little bit of, of, of the possibilities of, of taking out the rumble features or the gyro yeah. features. Uh, I think that to call it a switch, it still needs to be modular and that it, the controller still, I, in my opinion, still something needs to switch. Like either it still, ha- it still can I be docked there. or it can, or the controllers can come off. One of the two things still needs to exist. And, and yeah. I think that, I don't know. I, I th- I'm assuming it's going to be the controller because of their logo. You know, like the whole snapping feature is still yeah. a thing. But what does that mean? Does that mean that they're going to be like extra small controllers out there? Mm-hmm. Or is this thing going to fit with your current controllers? It's true, but Matt, after? this is the company that gave us a 2DS that played 3DS games. So they're willing <laughs> to uh, be confusing like that. I um, I agree. I think if I were to like say what I, my wants, which I think is this bleeds into, I would say, yeah, yeah, they'll remove HD Rumble. You know, when you look at the Joy-Con I'm thinking it's fixed controller, so they do not pop off. Sure. But you could sync another Joy-Con. You could sync another Pro Controller. Sure. So do you think it has any Rumble? Like, even just, like, the old standard Rumble? The cheap one? No, no. anything they can so. make like it. Wow. doesn't have Rumble. Any know, barrier to entry? Have Rumble. Yeah. Wow. You know, sh- short of, like, you know, uh, Pokemon Pinball on the Game Boy, you know, very few games utilizing a Rumble pack. Um, the I think it won't. I think controllers will stick on it. Matt, like you are saying... My guess is that it could still do video out, uh, so you could still put it in a dock. It could still run games like that, but that wouldn't mm-hmm. mean it would have to come with an included additional controller, you know. Or are they going to put out like? Right. Are they going to put out? My guess it'll be one ninety nine. It'll be mm-hmm. Nintendo mm-hmm. Switch S, something like that. Yeah. And um, and we know we have like Dragon Quest Eleven S coming. Not that that's a Nintendo game, but that is on the Switch exclusively. Um, <laughs> but use that branding, use that Apple branding and they'll make it in this case, it'll be like the smaller version. It will have fixed controller. It will not have rumble. And then you have to buy separately like a stand and pro mm-hmm. controller, maybe pack that you could also use for other switch models. Um, but that way if people want to use it. They could pay the a hundred dollars for a joy con. Cause right now, if you buy right. a new dock, that's Nintendo first party, which you want to do if you're buying a new dock, we've talked long about yeah. that, but the, um, you know, that's basically going to run you that's 70 80 bucks. bucks right there. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then also you have the, you know, pro controller that's going to run you another 70 ish dollars. So <laughs> that's a lot of money, but they could put that into a hundred dollar pack pretty reasonably. Um, yeah. And then it would still have that capability, but maybe out of the box. And we, we know that Japan already has precedent for this. They released mm-hmm. a, a skew of the Nintendo Switch that did not come with a dock. So there's already that kind of in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I'm kind of envisioning would happen. What do you guys no, think? I think, I think you're yeah. pretty dead on. I, I think that's probably what's going to happen uh, in that it's going to be the smaller form factor. It's the, you know, the all the barriers to entry for switch or the more accessible switch it's gonna you know they're gonna market it as that thing you can throw around throw in your bag like even more around the portability factor Mm -hmm. i mean this is their it's their new game boy um i think it's gonna have the same screen resolution as our current switch Uh, the next one will have probably better resolution um but it's probably gonna even look better on a on a smaller screen or they'll keep the same screen size but just decrease the bezels and Mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah and the joy cons have less bulk i mean that would do a lot because right. it's, it's not yeah. like the Vita is that much smaller. They're pretty 
similar. So you kind of achieve that portable effect. How now that we're two years in, what's your guys' ratio in terms of handheld and versus docked play? And also tabletop. I know we all play 100% tabletop mode. <laughs> Love that kickstand. I would hate uh, to see that gone on a Switch S or Mini Micro. <laughs> right. I'm still probably like 75, 25 docked to undocked. Um, I mean, there's there's a few times where like my roommate's got the TV. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I don't mind playing it in handheld. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I... I love the idea of playing it on an airplane i or like in a car after a while though i don't know about you guys like i sometimes get a little bit motion sickness like when you're playing in handheld yeah. and you're like everything's moving around you um but like at home like occasionally handheld but it's it's mostly docked i play yeah, I, it, I probably probably 50 oh, 50 i was gonna i mean i the thing i've enjoyed most about it is that it it, it does both things and i right. i grew up playing a lot of right. uh you know game boy advance and ds in bed and traveling and i still did the same thing um yeah there are certain games i want to play on the bigger screen though when zelda first came out i found myself playing it a ton just in bed beforehand <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. well i should finally go to bed and stop playing this game undock yeah <laughs> go to bed gotcha. but like Sorry, you know mom, when we, we like <laughs> playing Nintendo switch handheld yeah when you when you're tra- traveling or you're visiting friends um yeah. you know like whenever i bring my switch over like i'm totally comfortable playing it that way but oh yeah um yeah it's 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 really interesting because it's nintendo's hope to be like all right for those of you that want the traditional console experience here's the pro for those of you that don't but then it's like but yeah but the the whole point of the switch was <laughs> what you've done which is great like mm-hmm. people can make that make that choice for themselves sure that's my, my my fear is that the pro is going to be you're going to be more enticed to dock it versus not um yeah and you're gonna you know you're gonna maybe miss out on that like the handheld experience sure. because you yeah know, now the I, light uh, model offers that more I would say that for, uh, you know, I play probably 95% of the time in handheld. I'm very, oh, very rarely okay. on a screen. Um, wow. And it's really just if there's a game where I'm like, oh, like I want to see what Starlink looks like. Uh, but I'm yeah, almost yeah. exclusively handheld. I've always been a big handheld gamer and I just have fun throwing the backpack. I enjoy playing in a car when I have an opportunity. That can be challenging because I occasionally have to like work the turn signal or the brake or whatever. But me and a lot of car time. But, the, um, but really like the... I almost exclusively use it that way. Um, and I, you know, think that would be a good option for someone like me, but looking at the, uh, if we go switch plus or pro, what the mm-hmm. other one would the be. XL, if, yeah. If I had to, um, I don't foresee it being any bigger, but like Matt said, it'd be nice if like the bezels were reduced. So the screen, right. The display really got bigger, the but estate. the screen was the same size. Yeah. I imagine it would still use the Joy-Con. It would be a bummer if it did not. Speaking of the Switch Mini, I think definitely like the IR sensor, totally gone. A lot of those little mm-hmm. features on the mm-hmm. Joy-Con mm-hmm. remind me of the Vita. Because yeah. when the, the Vita was a great handheld, I really enjoyed. But the it had all of these ideas that never panned out, never were going to. You know, it had a multi-touch touchscreen on the front. It had forward-facing and back cameras. It had a rear yeah. touchpad that like kind of barely even worked. Uh, when you felt like it should and only games like tearaway really took advantage of it everything else was like man you wish they would remove these things but i'm sure sony feels like well if we do then certain games are going to work certain games wouldn't and that yeah, i feel right. like nintendo won't care about that so much um because when you look at their history like we look at super nintendo not playing nes games or we look at the even 3ds being like hey on new 3ds um, only then can you play Xenoblade Chronicles or Binding of Isaac or some games are going to run much better and run really poorly in the case of like the Dynasty Warriors-esque games or mm-hmm. uh, all the games that were on the 2DS, you know, games like Super Mario 3D Land really relied on using 3D functionality for some of those puzzles and yeah. you just wouldn't have the Nintendo kind of meh, shrugs. There's games on the Switch now where it's like only touchscreen mode. Like you can't play it docked. You know, there's some yeah. games like that already and so... You know, when we think, though, about, like, a Switch Mini, it would not be able to remove Joy-Con. You <coughs> couldn't play Super Mario Party. You know, you can't play that oh, with a traditional controller. Yeah. You couldn't play yeah. um, any, any game that has a different, drastically different view between the, b- between the two or forces a certain control style, you know, would be really limited. It'd be challenging. Even Pokemon Let's Go has, like, a weirdo control style. You can't use a pro controller. But if you want to do two players, you're basically each using a separate Joy-Con. That would be not possible unless you had two additional joy con in addition yeah, to they thing. Bought separate, you, yeah. you can't 
be doing throwing on one of them and then you know holding the screen and then throwing the whole joy con you know so there would be there would be that but i think nintendo just doesn't care i think yeah. They'd be like, hey, if you want to play that way, like we have a dock thing yeah. or like you can sync controller. Do you can sync four people around a tabletop Mario Party game like um, but it would introduce some weirdness that I think Nintendo's already shown. They aren't that worried about. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I think for a pro model, if I had to pick some things, I would guess it would be I'm going to guess it's, it would be the same price and they would phase out just the current model of Switch. Mm. Now, so. You know, the technologies, of course, advanced since when the Switch came out. It would be cheaper for them to make it anyway. I would think that, like, uh, the biggest thing, and Digital Foundry has done a nice job breaking this down, but the Switch will never natively, um, you know, nat- natively output at, at 4K. It's too much of a, no. a big task for it to do. You'd have yeah. to have a really robust handheld thing. It wouldn't be practical. The vents would be crazy. The battery would be <laughs> terrible. I don't see the 720p handheld screen changing. I think it'll just be... A, like mm. the bezels mm-hmm. um but i do think what you could see is right now if you um let's say you're playing a game on switch and you have a 4k display right now if you the upscaling from the 1080p possible output on the switch up to the 4k tv takes place on the tv side because the mm-hmm. tv has to carry that burden so there there's mm-hmm. a layer there of, kind of discontinuity between the output of the switch and the dock and then the HDMI to the TV, which then upscales it, which then is the thing you see. And that leads to a lot of inelegance in how that picture is processed. If mm, the dock yeah. were able to take on more responsibility with just upscaling, so it's still not going to output true 4K, but in the same way that the Xbox One S, which is still effectively the base model Xbox One, that can upscale games that are 4K capable, even if mm-hmm. it's not... Um, itself outputting native 4k so it's not actually the pixel count of 4k it's just able to s- smoothly transfer um, that over on the box side versus letting the tv attempt to do it yeah um, that would make a big difference especially you know now 2019 figure these people are people are getting it for christmas um you yeah. know 4k tvs and hdr is f- like more and more commonplace now um yeah and you have to think they have a want to that's an expectation particularly when the next consoles come out people are going to want 4k tvs for their you know ps5 or what have you they probably don't want a weird disparity and we're already seeing i know this is a long rant so i appreciate it but like trials uh the motorcycle game came out recently on switch and it's like very blurry like the switch version and Mm -hmm. the sports Mm -hmm. games look much worse and that's only going to be amplified when the next generation of consoles come out. Yeah. So anything that kind of bridges that gap would be appreciated. Yeah. I mean, I, we've seen reports and I've read some things before about like a lot of the bigger party games or bigger party uh, publishers and developers. They they want to be on the switch uh, very badly, but mm-hmm. it's so much effort to um bring it down to a scale where it's currently at. Um, yeah. I mean, Ubisoft had to bring in a whole nother developer just to do that port uh, for Starlink, you know, for example. Um, and some games, they just realize the resources aren't worth it always um, currently with the way it's maxed out. So, but you bring out a, a good point of like making this new dock um, that can just do more of the the horsepower behind all of it, upscaling to possible 4K. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, do you guys, it sounds like, uh, I think it's a yes across the board, but I mean, you guys think a new dock is is coming with either already bundled with one or both of these or just as a standalone Hey, if you want an updated dock, here it is for another eighty dollars. Um, you can trade in I, for it or something. Yeah, I think it would be something that it would have to do it in kind of combo with the switch itself. It would have to be shared because right now it's really just like a USB connection, USB C, right. uh, that allows the HB, HDMI. So it would have to have a little process. Right, it would only the work side. with the Switch Pro. Yeah, I think yeah, it would be exclusive to that. Um, I, but I think that's, I think that's probably what's going to happen. Um, is it's a, it's a great opportunity for them. Like I said, if their if their little, littler switch is going to be the the handheld focus, um, and all the marketing behind that's going to be like, hey, cheap way to play games on the go. All these yeah. switch games work. Yeah. Um, then the pro model is going to be the we would like you to like this. Here's the incentive to play on your TV. Um, more often and here's why and i think like you both of you said like the switch the it's going to be bundled together and the switch is going to like be beefed up a little bit but so is the dock and they're Mm -hmm. only going to work together and you're not going to be able to plop in your you know switch 1.0 um into the new dock and expect anything different yeah um 
Though it would be cool if, if, if the Switch Pro did allow you to use your current dock uh, so that you can, you know, all players around the world could have a second dock uh, that yeah. they can throw around their house somewhere. That, right. I, would, I hope Nintendo allows for that. I, that's the only, it's the only item uh, or only peripheral I can, uh, I can see potentially having an issue. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. And, you know, I think it would be, you would hope they would do it as not a big dock change i think there are some changes to the dock we would like to see already like the mm-hmm. piece of plastic on the front side of the dock you know can scratch the screen pretty right. easily if you don't put yeah. in the switch carefully and what nintendo could do is just make the the way in which the switch pro uh in, engages with that USB C connection uh, you know really it turns it onto a new like whatever the the chip is that it uses. It puts it mm-hmm. into a special mode. Maybe it has yeah. more vents or whatever that isn't noticeable in handheld. Right. But it allows it to really work overclock it more than it already is uh, as it already works. Um, right. And maybe the dock is you know less of a big deal, but it's just how the switch recognizes the dock, and then the dock compatibility wouldn't be a problem. But the dock is a solution if that is too much of like a an ask for the handheld hardware. But so yeah. this is this is all really exciting because. Um, like you mentioned, Austin, earlier, you got your sister, uh, you know, uh, a, what was it, a 3DS with Animal Crossing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and we know Animal Crossing is coming this year. We know Pokemon's coming this year. There's so many games coming. And this, this, this just allows for them to uh, begin to bundle, especially their smaller console, with some of these games. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, right out of the box, the same way they've done with DS and 3DS for years and years oh, and years. Oh, Pokemon and, Sword and Shield with this cheaper right. Switch is just going to fly off the shelves. Yeah. Oh, yeah, abs- absolutely. And, and, and I'm excited to see it happen first with what I'm hoping is a summer release of Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's definitely going to happen. I would love to see them do like a little... We, we've seen them kind of uh, come out with some deals where they give you like uh, Nintendo eShop money um yeah already yeah. with if you buy a switch it'd be interesting to see if they partner up with some nindies um to be like hey like you get these three nindy games or you know it, it'd be sequel. interesting to see a nindy you, skew you grease, of there. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. right now they have that deal that i think it's just ending but it's like yeah if you buy a nintendo switch you mm-hmm. get like one of these mario games basically right. for half off and so you yeah. get like a credit for party news from mario brothers u deluxe odyssey or cart and so they have like very specific deals right that'd be a neat one yeah. to see plus yeah, yeah definitely. i would love to see they have only dipped their toes in it but for this current generation the switch like only really smash bros a special joy con pokemon let's go special joy con nothing else uh, if the switch look two had like a red and has like the colors but yeah. like in terms of like really like this one's eevee this one's pikachu this oh one's the gotcha logo, yeah. like, right right yeah, yeah. Uh, that can't be bought separately in sure. terms of in terms of this uh, if there's a smaller one, you could do like Matt. You said kind of jokingly the face plates, but yeah, I really like the face plates on the the new. Well, 3DS maybe not face plates, but we'll probably see more color options. Yeah, right? exactly. Like the, Just the, like the Switch console itself is Fire Emblem comes out right. what, in July. Right. Like, what if you have one that has? They've done a lot of 3DSs there's, for Fire Emblem. Like one is going to be very much like just matte black and the small one is going to be uh iteration of colors right. and right and then um, freaks like me will be like oh i want to get that right fun iteration so of color who's, for, who's buying this because here's here's my problem right i own a switch you all own a switch yeah yeah i want i actually do I, not i'm gonna own want the these Nintendo switch. <laughs> you're right, right, right. <laughs> i need to come clean Psych- he's, he's never owned one he's just been know. faking the um, whole time <laughs> <laughs> you mean this game pad <laughs> uh oh, no, out no, of range so- uh, sorry i turn on Oh, but I can turn on my TV with it. <laughs> oh, um, it's, it's called Nat TV. Feature. Let me tell you about it. It's very good service. <laughs> okay, continue. Um, I don't know what I'm going to get. Uh, I, want, I want them both. There's a part of me that's like, uh, I want the smaller one to throw around. I want, like, the, I, I was just <laughs> on a flight back um, to Chicago, and, you know, it was, we're starting to descend. It's starting to get a little turbulent, and I'm, like, fumbling around with all my stuff, right. like, trying to put the stand back and trying to like, you know, I had the joy cons off and I'm like, oh, I gotta get this all together. And like things are moving right. around. I would like, Too I would love a little yeah. switch that was just kind of just all together. I want that mini one, I mean, but I also yeah. want the, 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 the pro one that's going to be able to this run. Is, this a, would be the big better. change for Nintendo. Cause I'm with you. That would be exciting for yeah. me too. And if they're malicious, like they were back for the new 3ds, where it was like, <laughs> Hey, they will be. They'll be like, Hey, 3ds XL. That's the only one company in the United States. Like Americans are 
giant super rude huge about people. it people they have big old hamburger hands <laughs> they're gonna want the 3ds xl and then like six months later they're like oh but here's the faceplate one just for a little bit guys yeah and, right, right. and it's like uh, the they NES give you the classic, option like... they rolled it out one after the other so it feels exciting when the other one comes out it's not you right. know a once and done choice right um Oh, they better but, come out at the same time. I know. They so they might do that. But, but the <laughs> bigger issue, though, is like I have a bunch of 3DSs. I've talked about it a lot. Um, but the problem is like there is it's not easy for me just to go from one to the other. I can't be like, I want to do my smaller faceplate one and put it in my bag. Or like I want to do the 3DS XL and mm-hmm. you know have a bigger th- – maybe I'm playing this one in bed or it's a lot heavier and the screen's heavier. In any event, like you have to do the system transfer every yeah. time. Now, yeah. at least for the Switch, we have cloud saves, yeah. you know? But not every game supports the cloud saves. Pokemon Let's Go. Yeah, Dark I'm Souls, hoping that's something one of them they... do. Yeah. So it's like I wouldn't be able to just have to switch it between those, and that's a major Nintendo temple. And if Let's Go isn't letting the cloud save thing work, I cannot imagine Sword and Shield is going to be any looser on it. Like clearly they're locking down right. the saves because they're concerned through extracting the save data, putting it online, letting people access the Pokemon without catching it, which I don't even know the route that could be done i'm sure it even can be done with but they just want one more barrier to that uh accessibility so you know i just it would be awesome if they had a consumer friendly way of doing that because that would be a fun another thing we haven't talked about but switch pro you know right now you can't uh there isn't a way to like plug in a, a mic straight to the controller right yeah, like right. um you can have a little corded headset but you can't even do a bluetooth headset without a dongle like there is not that yeah. elegant solution. That would be something the Switch Pro could have. But that probably then isn't something you need portably. I'm never going to take a gaming headset with me in a bag. Um, you know, so that maybe a so Switch Lite, that would be more appealing. But unless I can easily jump between the, the same game library and sa- saves, there isn't a realistic reason. Now, yeah. Yeah. another Nintendo podcast is, are we going to be constrained by realism? No, are we gonna just have them both and then you know do a transfer once a week and it take you had to wait a week between transfers on 3ds? I would like do it and be like, all right, in a week's time I have a trip and I'm gonna want the smaller one. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we hope they make it easy. Right, right. Yeah, as far as like other specs go, I'm thinking I actually do think there's a chance for the Pro XL whatever model that they can bump that up to 1080p. Um, and my my argument being that like small tablets, um or even smartphones easily get to 4k right and they still come in at about you know you can come in at about 300 dollars um for those items phones maybe a little bit more expensive but um if you think like smaller tablets and stuff i think it's possible to shrink the bezels a little bit i think that one can be bumped up to 1080p native um but you know we'll see um i do still think they'll keep the stereo speakers for sure um i think they'll upgrade for both of them um bluetooth Currently, I think it's running Bluetooth 4.2, if I'm not mistaken. It's so um, but bad. The Wi-Fi chip is so bad, too. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I th- I'm, I'm definitely hoping they up the Wi-Fi chip. Um, Bluetooth 5.0, I mean, that's a standard in all smartphones and tablets nowadays. Like, for the past two or three years, uh, it's been Bluetooth 5.0. It connects faster, has a longer range. You can connect more devices before um, any sort of distortion happens with connectivity. Um, so that would be huge. Um, I'm hoping... This is one of the most like kind of like underdog things that I'm really hoping for. The Joy-Cons on the Switch Pro. Just a little bit more somehow ergonomic. If it's the buttons are a little bit bigger, yeah, I think if it's easier be. to grip a little bit more. See, like it, I don't it has a little think curve they're gonna more. change the Joy-Cons. The, like, I don't think they're gonna change them. I think you're gonna be able to use your old ones yeah. with your new ones. Right. But I do That's think true. they're gonna make some adjustments. We did because... have the Wii Motion Plus back in the day, right. so there is yeah. a precedent yeah. for people for them changing that. So I could see that for sure. And I, I think that's just yeah. like one of the things that has been uh commonly, you know, uh yeah. groaned about for you know, since the switch switch got here in twenty seventeen. So Yeah. Seventeen? Seventeen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah twenty seventeen. Um and it's, and I, I we know Nintendo listens. I mean, the XL was for the you know hamburger hands but do Americans. They to this, the answer <laughs> will surprise you. <laughs> um, so I I guess my my hope is that um, there is some type of some type of UI change that comes with the the new the new SKUs. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, this is a new 
generation. But I hope it's just like a consoles. software update that's also available on the old Switch. Just well, like, ab- absolutely. Yeah, just yeah, like the same way iPhones, it's like available yeah, exactly. on everything. So for your 4S, yeah, you, you know, still get it to I mean, like the uh, Windows. Windows 10 typically does it. A new, you know, a new Surface product comes out. It's going to have yeah. the mm-hmm. latest Windows version. It usually coincides with a big, exactly. You know release give us uh, those themes yeah i think give the original the google pixel still is getting the most recent android updates yeah, like it's it's sure. still very doable yeah but I, I just hope that two coincide with one another i hope it's like a hey this is the next gen of of your switch experience um and it's not just new hardware with the same like i want yeah. the experience of opening up this new product and turning it on to be familiar but refreshing and new and yeah. if i open it up to see the same yeah. like user interface i'm gonna be a little bummed by it uh, especially if it's in 720 again and the screen's just a little bigger right. um i don't know but at what point is it like okay this isn't a new console this is just a you know an updated I'm, version i'm like, thinking yeah with these new SKUs as well as an update to the currently existing SKU with a new you know switch uh os 2.0 um I'm thinking it does become a little bit more robust. You know, you throw in the fact that they'll probably get some stronger NVIDIA um, chips. Um, I'm like to the point where I'm like, I'm thinking this new OS update um, that I imagine will be coming with it uh, is more like streaming prepared. Yes, for games, but also like for just um, Mm -hmm. for media. I mean, Netflix, where has that been? Um, Yeah, will they or will they not probably put HBO on there? Probably not. But like Hulu, you know, uh, is on there. Um, There's about to be a ton of streaming services in our world. Um, right. you know, Disney's Disney launching Plus. their own, um, yeah, Disney DC plus, has theirs. um, everybody's getting their own. So it's like, how can they not? I mean, that's, that's a huge market. I mean, think of like how many people who love all things, Disney love all things, Nintendo. It's like that family friendly, like four quadrant mm-hmm. company like that. Why wouldn't you want to overlap with that? Um, so I, yeah, kind of going off what you said, Matt, I think kind of this more robustness of the OS. Um, I think that's something that will come with It'll all of be- them. It'll be interesting to see. So I think we're all viewing this as like the DS Lite equivalent, but we don't know, you know, what Xbox is going to do with their next console, right? You think it's going, I, you would guess it would be new powerful console. It will get the games that it gets will largely be still playable on Xbox One S and X. Like, and mm-hmm. you'll just know that you're having an sure. inferior yeah. experience, but like you can still play like Halo infinite like for example but it'll, yeah, it'll be, be much a better launch. on the new one and eventually it'll phase out the s in the same way that the ios updates are no longer available on old phones but the yeah. but we don't but right now that would still be very new for nintendo it would be new for the industry writ large so it would be cool to see if you know the switch is so popular it's and the momentum is so strong we joked earlier about like what's the next console you know mm-hmm. wii u2 and that <laughs> You know, Nintendo, that scares me with Nintendo for two reasons. One, yeah. they in, in recent history, they've had a hit and a miss, a hit and a miss, right? We had Game Boy Advance, which had sluggish sales after the Game Boy, and then the DS, which was huge, and then the 3DS, which was not nearly as huge as the DS. Still a success, but... And then the Switch. And the same thing goes for, uh, you know, GameCube, not a hit. Wii, massive hit. Wii U, huge failure. And then the Switch. And so um, you want them the switch is so popular you want them just to keep on iterating on the switch and never kind of let that user base go yeah. you know keep right. it nintendo switch switch Two, super switch um and then also nintendo is not good about backwards compatibility i have a lot of switch games and you want like but part of the fun of having them on the switch is like hey i had this indie on there it was on sale or it wasn't and i just want to and but it's like oh i can revisit this at some point and you want that library to like continue to amass Mm-hmm. Um, and not be like, oh, new one, like here's new Super Mario Brothers, you deluxe deluxe, like for the <laughs> Switch 2, that would be, you know, it, you want to feel like it's an investment. I think a lot of people are viewing it like that because the attach rate is so high. I think it's indicative that people are, you know, they want things on the Switch. I want this game on the Switch. I already have yeah. it on this, but I want it on the Switch. They're not going to want to do that again for the Switch 2. Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping that Nintendo has, and I know we we only have history to go off of until everything's official and it's announced and it's in our hands. But I'm I'm hoping Nintendo has learned their lessons from the Wii U, and I'm hoping they're learning good lessons now with the Switch of like, and I I think I've said this before that this is our iPhone, right? Like this is Nintendo's iPhone. Just you've you've struck gold. Just yeah, the small iterations. You know, certainly room for improvement, but don't do something too off the wall and right. i know that's Don't hard to blow s- it big right right to go from <laughs> wii to wii u and just be like wait what um 
but yeah just make this small incremental stuff because this is the switch the device itself is going to print nintendo money they're one of the few companies that make money off of selling um physical hardware um as far well, as i the think consoles i think go. them the investors everyone knows what they have right now i don't yeah. think they are gonna uh, alter course here and i i mean the whatever that gets revealed whether it's at e3 or in a pre e3 like reveal whatever it is uh um i think it's going to be indicative of how they're going to proceed in the next couple of years um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and kind of map out like the switches uh lifeline for us a bit um but it's good it's good that it's happening it's good that nintendo is doing this at the end of the day uh, that they understand that th they've got a, a great thing and they need to keep the momentum up and so they're going to keep giving us more of it um they did it with the ds they're doing it with the 3d did it with 3ds uh so it's good to see it's happening here and i'm excited because all of us are going to buy it <laughs> Yeah. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to give my switch to my my girlfriend um so she can have something <laughs> to go. play. Yeah, it's charitable. There Definitely. Go. Uh very good. Sure. So boys, should we end it on here? Should we end it on this note? We should. I think so. Thank you boys for joining us uh for today for another episode. This thank boy. you to all of our fans <laughs> for King joining D. us. Um <laughs> yeah, and as soon as more switch news comes out, uh we will know where to check out to hear about uh three mm -hmm. handsome guys talking about it. So wait one week and then come to another Nintendo podcast where we'll talk about it. So just wait yeah, hear the news, wait a absolutely. week and come see our <laughs> our cold our face. shining faces. Yeah, <laughs> our cold faces. <laughs> so yeah, don't forget to so Times three weeks <laughs> if you are watching us on youtube to click that subscribe button um and if you are not listening to us on podcast hit it over there as well too uh apple podcast podcast one soundcloud the google assortium of podcast possibilities um share it with your friends spread the word um let them know that amp is the place to be we'll see so, your mothers thank you yes Very for sure send things. them as well thank mm -hmm. you again everyone for joining us and we will see you in the next episode bye oh,